Welcome to the Nomi Yacht Charters. This is Baraka, an ASEAN 400, uh, an extremely popular three cabin, two head boat, probably one of the most successful charter boats of its time. Baraka. The name Baraka means, in the most improbable circumstances, it is the great gift of enhancing life and making our surroundings better than they were before. Let's hope you experience the mystery. So, moving right along, I'm just going to go through the boat from the, from the plants and up to the bow to start with before we go down below. Right, we have a few items to just take off on the back of the boat here. Number one is your, your stern tie rope. There's 600 feet of stern tie rope and that is fantastic when you're up in the islands and you're in, in a, a busy anchorage and you need to anchor both bow and stern. That's the easiest way to run it out in the dinghy, go around a tree or through a ring bolt and come back. And in the morning, all you need to do is just release the one end and pull it back. You've even got a little crank handle on the side there that helps you with that. Um, on this side, you'll see with a blue band around it and a large star pattern is the fill for the water. And it says quite clearly water. And then on this side over here, we have a similar type of fill and it's got a much smaller star pattern so you can't put your winch handle in there and open it and make the mistake of thinking it's water and put diesel into it. Okay, so that key for that is inside the chart table drawer. So we'll point that out to you when you're down there. And here we have the shore power cable. It's different to ones that you're probably used to. It's a smart plug attachment so you lift up the lid and you squeeze the paddles there and then you give this a little shake and out it comes. No twisting, it's a straight plug in and vice versa when you put it in, you push it in and you let those paddles don't return nicely and then you should be able to lock the lid and you hear that encouraging thwack as it locks, that means it's not going to come out, which means that if you power off the dock forgetting to do that, it will break the cable. Over here is the shore power end. This is a conventional, and it plugs straight in there with an in and twist. Please remember to take that with you, because that gives you your heat, and it gives you battery charging on the boat. Right, now also in the way of safety equipment, we've got a man overboard pole, which is dropped into that socket there. We have your life ring with uh, 15 meters of floating line, and then you've got a uh, heaving line there. You've also got a floating light that will join the ring if you throw it over at night, you'll see where you've thrown it to. Very important is this little exhaust here. Let's point that out to you. That exhaust is the exhaust for the heater. Now what will happen is if the dinghy is tied up on there and, and the dinghy painter is led through that fair lead and it passes too close to that exhaust when the diesel's running, it will burn through the dinghy painter in about 30 seconds. So remember when you fire up the heater, move the dinghy to the other side, or else you'll get up in the morning hoping to go for a dinghy ride, and guess what? There's no dinghy. Expensive. So watch out for that. That can catch most of us. And of course the barbecue is on here, and it's just clamped on. Now there is a hose connects to the spare bottle. That, sh that saves you from changing silly little green bottles all the time. So all you do is take the big barbecue, the big propane, stick it on the deck there, connect the one end to the regulator of your, of your barbecue and the other one into the propane bottle. And yet here is the boom seat, which is locked in place with these roll bolts. They slide in there and they lock it. And it's really important when the seat is up that this is dog down firmly, because if not, seat collapse down when you jump on it. So that's very important just to roll those in firmly. Now to put it down so we can board, what we do is just roll them away and hold on to the, the tether like that and just lower it gently. That's it. So that's your boarding pack. On either side we have lockers ideal for putting garbage in when you're cruising up in the island, up in the areas that don't like garbage you won't take garbage with you. Over here, we have the emergency um, tiller. You use a winch handle to undo that, 
And when that cap is off, you can look straight onto the top of the steering quadrant and the actual handle drops straight in, gives you immediate steering should the cables break. Now that that's the emergency until it lifts in the lockers. Before we move there, this is the bilge pump. It's the manual bilge pump and the handle for that lifts inside the gas lock. Okay, so that's the bilge pump handle. Can be used as a crew disciplining tool as well. Right, so you stop you stick that in there and you pump away and you can hear it pumping, there is no water in the bilge. So that lives inside the propane locker. So if you have come around here and have a look, the propane locker is right there. Now we always like to have the propane shut when not in use. So I'm gonna open it now because we will be going down and oh, we'll be lighting the stove. Right, we'll just have a look at the lockers in here. These lockers are very useful because they're totally sealed from down below. So you can put gas in there, you can put your spare propane bottle in there, and even if it leaks, it's not gonna hurt you or harm you down below. It's totally sealed from the boat. So, and always remember to use the tether to hook so this doesn't come crashing down. It is a very heavy lid, and you could seriously hurt yourself if it wasn't tethered properly. On the other side, we have the spare anchor, spare propane, spare lines and a hose. So again, you have plenty of space to, to put your own stuff in when you arrive. And again, there's a tether which must get clipped on to stop it from crashing down. This locker should never be used for anything because in here you've got the electrics for the heating system, you have the auto helm and you have the electrics for, for, the, for the heater so you don't want to be popping or putting anything in there. If you throw fenders in there there's a good chance they'll migrate across and get caught in the steering cable. So nothing for that. And if you remember that's where our propane lives. Always remember to switch that propane bottle off. Right. Here we have the single lever Morse control, a uh, single lever that does both throttle and the gear shift as well. In the 12 o'clock position, and it really has to be that neutral 12 o'clock position, you can push the button in. If it's just resting in that way, you can't put it in. So you have to find that neutral spot, press the button in, and give yourself a little bit of throttle prior to starting. Now that is throttle only with the button in. Now watch what happens when I move it back. You'll see the button will automatically pop out. You see it? And now if I pushed it ahead, I would have it go straight into gear and the harder I press, the more throttle I would have. So let's go back to the 12 o'clock position again. There we are. And we should be able to push that in, which we can. We're going to push it in and we're going to select a bit of throttle. And now we're going to start the, start the motor. I need the Yanmar key which will be on your keys given to you. And it slots straight in there. And with a little bit of throttle, less than a quarter rack of throttle, you just twist and go. And she starts readily. There we are. That's it. Now we run this engine at no, no harder than 2,500 RPM. Okay, there you are. So 2,500 RPM is your maximum rev. When you start the engine up, you want to give it a little bit of throttle so that it will start charging the batteries. And also when you want to work the an anchor windlass, you'll want the light, the charging light to be off. So these lights are quite important. One is for oil pressure and, and the other one is for temperature. And the last one is for charging. So if your alternator is charging the batteries, it means that the anchor windlass will be able to operate and the light should be off for that. Okay, now if I wanted to put into gear, we'll just go through that, we put it back, the button pops out, and you'll hear it is engaged gear, and we're off to the races. Okay, so that's that. Now to stop the engine, never switch the key off. You never do that. You come across the kill switch. If you've been running the engine hard, you let it idle for a good while to cool down, maybe three or four minutes, and then you come down here and you pull the stop cable up and the engine switches off. Always remember to turn it. And then to get rid of that beastly noise, we have to switch the key off. 
So this boat is rigged with a roller furling mainsail. Makes it super easy to handle all the lines, the sails, all from the cockpit. So as you can see here, the first reef, second reef, main halyard are all blocked off with a zap strap. All the lines are fed into the box down below to make sure those are not touched because we're going to be bringing the lines in and out rather than up and down on a regular lazy jack mainsail. First things first is to have the main sheet wide open like so. Then we're going to move on to the other side and open up the main furl and the On this side we're going to open up the main furl and have it completely wide open. Make sure the block all the way back flat. Then the out hole wide open. So. As it is in his name, self-explanatory, we're going to be pulling the sail out with the out hole. We're going to want to make sure all the lines are completely free, nobody is stepping on them and they're not coiled, and they're ready to run. Then the main sheet, a little bit of main furl, a little bit of tension, the main sheet is open on the other side. we we'll pull the sail out with the out hole, a little bit of tension on the furl. As you'll see on the mast itself, there's a spool and a drum and you'll see it furl away and pull out. I'm going to be holding a little attention on the main furl. Crew member here is going to be pulling out on the out hole. Like so. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful and stop. And vice versa. I'll hold a little attention here. You want to pull on this one. Maybe a couple more loops around. It would be much easier if we point to completely dead up wind, not at the dock. <laughs> we don't want to have any tension across the boom, as we are right now at the dock. You need to be going completely dead up wind like you would with a regular mainsail. Perfect. One more. Excellent. Thanks, crew member. As a quick refresh, I want to make sure that the main sheet completely wide open the block, all the way back, ready to run free. The other side here, out hole, completely wide open, ready to run free. Main furl, ready to run. You need to be pointing directly upwind, just like you would with a regular mainsail. Boom topping lift, wide open. Make sure that when you drop the boom topping lift that it is not chafing on his bimini but you do need to have this loose in order to bring the sail in and out. Here we are at the bow of the boat. The engine is running at 1500 RPMs. We have this anchor locker. It's a nice V that does require that about every six feet or so, you are stopping to feed the chain down. We do not want a clump piling underneath this gypsy here. It's not just a crew discipline device. It is required to knock the chain down and release the gypsy if it should get caught. Simple and down mechanism. Same person who is feeding the chain down, it's the same person pushing the up and down button, please. We have a good 150 feet of chain, 125 feet of road, and is marked every 30 feet. Here we have roll bolts here, same as the transom style. Open, open, release these blocks here. Make sure all crew members are aware that the stairs will now be missing from the companionway. They do come completely off. It will be quite a jump. Move this nicely over to the side. Out of the way. Beautiful huge access to the engine. Lots of things to look at here. We have belts, hoses to assess. We have done full service before you arrive for your charter. So you should not need to add, top up any oils throughout your charter holiday, but there are things you can assess for fluids 
the back there, you can see the coolant, see the strainer basket. Uh, we can check the oil down here at the dipstick. Can you see that? And can you see the strainer basket back there? If there is not any water coming out the back of the exhaust when you start up the engine, immediately shut the engine off. Come down below, assess the strainer basket. Very simple first likely cause is there is seaweed caught up in there. Good access from the port cabin over here as well. You'll be able to better access that. Should be hand tight on top of that strainer basket to pull it out and pull out any seaweed, maybe a little fish. After any amount of motoring, it's very good practice to check the engine bay every day. We will have it completely dry, just like so, and you can record any amount of oil, fluids, anything of that sort, just visually here. The floorboard directly forward of the engine can be lifted up for the high water bilge alarm is active. Can you hear that beep? And the through hole right here. Do not touch it. But that's where it's located if you need to turn it off, which you shouldn't. So we were talking earlier how crucial it is to always check the back of the transom of the boat to make sure there is a steady flow of water coming out the back of the exhaust whenever the engine is running. If that is not the case, immediately shut off the engine. Come down below. Like we said, the most likely cause is seaweed has been sucked up into the salt water intake or into the strainer basket. Before you can check the strainer basket and take off the lid, open up this floorboard immediately forward of the end. Make sure you come down below, shut off the engine intake, just like so. Now you can go back over to the strainer basket. It is just hand tight. Take off the lid. Make sure you do not lose that O-ring seal. You will not be able to prime if that O-ring seal is not replaced into that strainer basket that we pointed out at the back of the engine. Just clear out any seaweed, that's the first probable cause. Refill it with water, make sure the O-ring's back on and replace that lid. Feel free to call us and we can talk you through this if this is happening. You'll either not see any water come out the back of the engine or you'll hear the engine alarm going off. As soon as you've done that, start up the engine. You have a minute to come back down and open this up again. This is your 12 volt DC panel and everything's labeled accordingly. Um, if you switch on the cabin lights, that will give you lights throughout here, but you have a, a little master panel here. That's your galley overhead. If you look behind you, you'll see that coming on. And then you'll have the sink light coming on. And then you have the table overheads, those two lights. So those are all the lights in the saloon. And they're all controlled from here. And this is your 12 volt DC outlet plug. So if you've got something you want to charge up, this is you'll switch that on and you'll plug in there. And we do supply little charging units for that, which will help you. And they live in here. You have a look. They're actually either there or the chart table. And what we have here is we have a whole a host of charging units. That's probably the neatest, and it gives you voltage at the same time. So you plug that in and then switch on the outlet. You can see it comes up and it'll give you the voltage and it gives you two USBs to charge. So that's a useful little unit. And we have um, the rest going on. This is the water pump. That's if you want water. You can hear it running and charging up. I would suggest you only have that on when you want to use it. Because if somebody's left the tap running and you go out and shop, it could be just trickling slowly and you don't notice. You'll come back in the, and the tanks will be empty. And also when you're trying to sleep at night, you don't want that pump motoring. But that is your water pump, so I'll switch that off. This is your bilge pump. I like to run that once a day. And when you listen, it makes a loud, raucous noise. And you can hear that that's empty. This is one turn. When it's pumping, it slows right down. So that's empty. This is your refrigerator unit. Now this unit is the engine-driven refrigerator. So when you're motoring along, you can switch this unit on, which says refrigerator unit, and the timer. Those have both got to go on, and that will bring in the powerful engine-driven fridge, which will freeze down the big plate inside the, the fridge unit. Okay, and then the next one's confusing. It's called Confort. 
And that is your shower drain pump. I'm sure that if you looked it up in French, Comfort is not the shower drain pump, but that's always been the shower drain pump. Your electronics, switch on your electronics outside. So we'll switch those on and then have a look at those when we, when we pass by. This is your VHF and Hi-Fi here and your radar. You've got a very effective radar. And this is the electric fridge. Now I would suggest you use the electric fridge whenever you're plugged into shore power because what you're taking out of the batteries is immediately being put back by the battery charger. So that's your electric fridge. So when I'm motoring along and I've got the alternator charging up the batteries, I usually have the refrigeration unit, that's the engine driven and the electric on at the same time. However, when I go and anchor, I always make sure the electric fridge is switched off because the big fridge would have frozen the plates down and will keep it cool for at least two or three days. So you won't have to continually be running the electric fridge. So that's a useful addition. Over here on the right is the electrical control panel. And this is the main breaker. Now, before you take the plug out of the back of the boat, it's always good to switch that off. So there's no current running. And uh, these are your outlets, your plug outlets. And this bottom one is your battery charger. So you'll always want that to be on when you have shore power working. Right. To work with the HF radio, you come across the extreme right hand side of the DC panel and switch on VHF. Then you come over here and there's a little power button. You hit that down, hold it for three seconds, one, and on it comes. Now, that's your WX channel. If you want to go to regular channels, you just hit that and that's 16 and then you can channel up and channel down. That's it. Now, if you want the WX channel, which is your weather channel, you just press one of those and there it comes and then you hit that and now you have weather. Okay, now to switch off, you hold this down for five seconds. One, two, three, three seconds. That's what you do. start it off, Kevin, we have the battery switches. Now if you just peer in there, you'll see that the red ones are labeled and basically they're the house batteries, the starter batteries and the anchor windlass. So those are all there. The black switch, is the common ground which will shut everything off on the boat. With these switches, you don't need to touch them at all. The up and down position is when they are on. If you wanted to switch them off, like the emergency parallel needn't be on um, when, you're, when you're motoring because um, the batteries are getting charged anyway, you can switch it so that they're in the horizontal position and that will switch it off. On the extreme left is a breaker for the windlass. So if the windlass is not working, that little yellow toggle will move and that will show you that the, the, the breaker has tripped. So again, everything is fine and it's working there, so you just leave it as it is. Over here we have the toolbox and you've got a fairly comprehensive toolbox there and you can affect most of the rep repairs on the boat with those tools in here. And just behind the helm seat, You've got the first aid kit, there it is. Okay, so that's where your first aid kit is. And underneath the chart table, you'll find that you have flashlights. You actually have a handheld VHF here. And you have your flare gun. Now in this little drawer underneath the seat, you will find you've got spare batteries, as I said, the diesel key and a spare padlock. That padlock's useful for locking up the dinghy. There is a steel security cable, a wire security cable, to use that for locking up. In each of the hanging cupboards in each, in each cabin are the life jackets. So please make sure that they fit and that they are in place and uh, before you actually leave. Before we, should, we, we move off from the chart table, there is the diesel fill key with the smaller star pattern. That lives in this lock. Okay, so I'll shut that. And right below is your um, your fire extinguisher. You've got one there. Okay, we're going to light the stove now. Remember, always open up the bottle in the cockpit locker on the port quarter. Open that up 
and that will allow the propane to flow through here. If you have a look inside this cupboard, you will see a red safety valve. It should always be across the line. And when you're about to use the stove, you give it a twist, and now it's in line, and with the bottle with the um, bottle open and that in line, you should be able to get propane flowing. So we'll light the stove, and that's the one we'll light. You can see the white button is on the left, so we'll, we'll light that. And it will take a while for the propane to come through. And I can hear the air hissing, so you can just listen, you can hear it. Here we are. So that's up and running. And with that, you'll get all the air out of the system. You should be able to light this one easily. There we are. You have to hold it down for about 10 seconds so that the, thermo the thermocouple can take over. Thermocouple is an interesting device which actually shuts the propane off should the wind from open hatch suddenly blow it out. You don't want propane to be leaking into the boat. So it has what we call a thermocouple and that thermocouple switches it off. But if I let that go too quickly, it'll switch off. You've got to give it at least 15 seconds holding it in for it to warm the thermocouple up so it stays on. So if I blew it out now, pretending to be a big gust of wind, it would shut the propane off. You wouldn't hear it. It wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't carry on running. And that proves that the propane... But always, please, when you finish cooking, switch the propane off. Down here is access to the grill. So you lift that up and open. And you've got a grill up there, and you've got an oven in there. I usually like to take this, this plate out, because it gives me better access to the oven. So we'll just take the tray out, and we'll just remove that. And you should be able to see in there quite clearly, you should be able to see the oven. And you can see oven, grill. So we'll go oven first, and we come down here, and you can see that it's lit up already. There's the oven. And again, hold for 15 seconds so that it will stay lit. That's your thermocouple working. And if I wanted to do grill, make some toast and stuff like that, I just whiz that across to the other side. Now we're on the grill. I press in so that propane will run. Can you see that? And now you have the grill work. Okay. So we'll switch the safety off and we'll switch the propane off. And then lock the stove. The stove also does have a gimbal lock, there you can see it, and that allows the stove to swing so you can cook at sea. Frightening thought, but it works very well. You just, and you lock that in, and that barrel bolt will make sure that the stove remains firm. Right. We're going to switch tanks, show you where the water tanks are. There's two water tanks on this boat. Both of almost equal capacity, 140 litres each. One tank is on the transom and the other one is on the starboard forward side of the deck. So let's open this and show you where the valves are for that. So this gives me access to the water heater and also the water pumps. Now over here, these are your water tank valves. If it's in line, it means it's open. So generally speaking, we like to travel and use the bow tank first, which gives you better sailing performance because you take the weight out of the bow. Never have both of them on. Or switch one off, so when this starts sputtering, you can quickly switch it off and open the full tank and you won't have a priming problem. What you do is if you run that completely dry and they were both dry, you'd have your work cut out for you getting the system primed which can be done, it just takes a long while. We are in the aft head. Show you the mechanism for emptying this holding tank. There's not a macerator here. You simply switch it over from the tank position, label tank here, over to the C position, like so. And you can hear it start filtering over. When it's in the C position, simply empty or out, just like that manual bilge pump up top. So here we are in the aft head basic Jabsco design. Always want to make sure it's left in the dry bowl. Can you see that dry bowl picture? I'm going to start off with that. Empty. 
up and down like so. Flick this lever over the wet bowl, up and down. Good five to 10. Excessive wet pumps on each side. Back on the dry bowl, up and down. Back on the wet bowl, again and again, till it's completely clear. Always leave it on the dry bowl. Thank you so much for watching our short video presentation. I do hope that this helps you on your trip. We sincerely hope that you have a great trip. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the operation, you've also got the manual that you can refer to and you can call me, 1250 Have a great holiday and thank you for sailing with the Namu Yacht Chances.